Hello my beautiful movie people, thank you so much for clicking on this video, my name is Chris, Disney is currently having their big event, D23, and day one of that event has concluded revealing a bunch of stuff for us to look forward to as Disney fans, or maybe a bunch of other stuff we don't care that much about. Either way, the thing I'm going to be doing here for you is breaking down the list of reveals, first looks, trailers, posters, really anything movie related that I thought was worth bringing up, I'm going to have it your way, timestamps will be in the description, so feel free to skip around to what you want to hear the most, but I also want to hear from you guys down below, what was your favorite reveal from day one of D23? Gotta admit to you guys, I was a little bit underwhelmed, a lot of this stuff we already knew about, and some of it wasn't even revealed to the public, it was for attendees only, but I think we still got some some pretty cool stuff here to talk about. And also if you can hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, it goes a long way for my channel. Alright, so before Disney got to their main event panel where they talked about a lot of upcoming live action Disney movies, Pixar films, and Disney animation movies, they did have their game showcase event that I'm not going to spend too much time on. In fact, the only thing I want to mention is they're coming out with a freaking Captain America and Black Panther video game. This was totally unexpected. I did not see this coming, but you know what? I'm happy it's coming. Revealed a D23 with a small little teaser trailer. The game is set in World War II where you'll be able to choose from up to four different characters, including Steve Rogers, Cat America, T'Challa's grandfather, Azuri, a member of the Dora Milaje, and a Howling Commando as they fight against Hydra in this era. It'll be a story-driven game that comes from the creator of Uncharted, which that right there gets me so hyped. And that's really kind of where the details end. We don't know what consoles, we don't really know a release date. Heck, we don't even have an official title for this game. I'm gonna be playing it either way. What about you guys. Then from there we finally got to the movie panel for Disney talking about their live action films Pixar and Disney animation. The first thing they wanted to start off with with this presentation was showing off their brand new logo we'll be seen in front of their movies. It's an all new 100 year anniversary logo that I gotta say does look pretty cool. Disney logo is one of the most iconic logos that plays before a movie it just gets you into that feel so this is kind of nice of them to add on and just be expecting to see it in the next couple movies. From here they moved on to movies that'll be releasing to Disney Plus starting with Hocus Pocus 2. We we not only got a brand new poster revealed for the movie, we also got a whole brand new trailer. Now I know there's a lot of people really anticipating Hocus Pocus 2, I wish I was a bigger fan of it, I'm more of a Halloween town kind of guy, but fans of Hocus Pocus are eating this trailer up, so that was kind of nice of them to reveal that, the movie will be coming September 30th on Disney+. Plus. Then from there we moved on to a sequel to a movie I remember loving, Enchanted, this time titled Disenchanted. They dropped not only a brand new poster, but they gave us our first trailer to this movie, giving us an idea idea of what it's about and I gotta say two things one I'm actually loving the direction of this sequel I think it's a great idea Amy Adams is returning as Giselle she's a mother of two but she's having trouble adjusting to normal life and she makes a wish that everything was more of a fairy tale world bringing that into our reality but the second part and what they messed up on is I feel like they kind of spoiled the movie for us and let us know Giselle is essentially the bad guy of this movie our main character is the evil wicked stepmother Broke of 12. Nothing will be as it was before. Stepmother! Uh-oh. That would have been a great reveal to say for the movie. Nonetheless, super excited for it. Love seeing James Marsden also in there. That'll be coming to Disney Plus November 24th. Then we were given our first poster to another live action remake headed straight for Disney Plus, Peter Pan and Wendy. Now, just like with the Pinocchio character, Peter Pan has been a character that has gotten endless live action interpretations, but this will be Disney's version of Peter Pan. They did show off a trailer for the audience, but it wasn't released to the public. The only thing we know about it is that although director David Lowry is bringing some of those iconic imageries of like Peter Pan and the gang flying over London, much of the feel of the movie is kind of dark in tone and setting up its own thing that a lot of people are liking. Other details that were revealed during this panel is Jude Law who plays Captain Hook did mention that there will be more backstories revealed in this movie. One even where it reveals Captain Hook and Peter Pan were once friends. Also that the Wendy character will be given equal screen time and backstory as Peter Pan and not just a side character to Peter Pan's love interest. So that's kind of cool but the way I was kind of underwhelmed with the Pinocchio movie, I don't know if I'm that excited for this one. From there, the panel moved on to theatrical releases outside of Disney+, Plus, starting off with The Haunted Mansion. Now, sadly, again, they didn't release any footage for the public, but they did play some footage for the audience. While Jamie Lee Curtis was out on stage in her Professor X chair, or if you want to be technical, the little chair you ride when you're in The Haunted Mansion ride, and people seem to dig what the director has done to it, it does have a spooky tone that is slightly scary. One person who was there witnessing called it Disney's version of Ghostbusters, 
Ghostbusters. And to me, that sounds awesome. Ghostbusters did have kind of that family friendly vibe, but at times it also had some scary imagery. I also like the moment where the director was on stage mentioning that long ago he was an employee at a Disney park where he even brought on his ID card showing you he's pretty passionate about making this movie. So that'll be nice to see for my Haunted Mansion fans. From there, we were given a reveal that not a lot of people knew about, and that is the prequel to the live action Lion King movie we just got. This prequel is being directed by Barry Jenkins, who won an Oscar for his movie Moonlight, and the movie is going to be titled Mufasa, The Lion King. This prequel will be set in two different time periods, one after The Lion King, where Pomone, Tumba, and Rafki are explaining the backstory of Mufasa to the cub of Simba. Audiences there were also given a bit of footage where it shows Mufasa as a baby cub being drifted away through a flood. Man can't catch a break! And honestly, I think this kind of is a great idea for a prequel scene the rise of Mufasa character we don't get that much information on but we start crying once he dies on screen this could be really cool or an unnecessary mess we'll have to wait and see then we were given a look to the upcoming live action Snow White movie that stars Rachel Zegler and Gal Gadot as the evil queen this is also being directed by Mark Webb underrated director unfortunately the footage was not released to the public but was shown for audiences and a lot of people are praising Gal Gadot as the evil queen saying she looks menacing. Rachel Zegler also seems to look really beautiful in her dress as Snow White. Either way, I'm rooting for this movie because this is Latino. I'm rooting for Latina Snow White. Then we got something that basically broke the internet is our first look to the live action Little Mermaid. Now this footage was released online to the public where you can see the first little teaser trailer revealing Halle Bailey as Ariel the Little Mermaid. I was honestly blown away as soon as I heard her voice. Just those few notes had me getting goosebumps. I think she's going to do a great job with the movie and she kind of has to because they did mention they'll be adding four new songs to this movie but I am really loving the look for her as Little Mermaid I think her costume is great the only change I would have made is maybe making her hair a little more red but it sucks that some people aren't even going to give this movie a shot just because of the casting of Ariel that's where things sort of ended for the live action releases then they moved on to revealing some new stuff with Pixar starting off here with a movie we had heard about Elemental this will be a movie in which the elements are alive fire water earth you know them you've been to school but we got a better look at the two main lead characters named Ember and Wade. Along with that, we also have other new stills showcasing some of the animation. I think this looks really beautiful. I'm also really loving the poster they released here. So I think that's going to be another win for Pixar. Then from there, Pixar revealed what their next original movie is going to be, and it's titled Elio. We have here some first looks at the concept. Basically, the movie will be about a kid named Elio, who's 11 years old, is transported to another galaxy where he's mistaken as the ambassador for Earth and is talking to aliens. I think that's a fascinating concept for a movie. I'm still all on board the Pixar train. I know some people jumped off of it, but to me, they're still rocking it, and I'm hoping this movie is another winner that is released theatrically and not just straight to Disney+. Plus. But something we know for sure will get a theatrical release because it's a sequel is it got announced Inside Out 2 is happening. Now, there's actually a lot of information pertaining to this movie because this was kind of leaked out a day before D23. An article came out saying Inside Out 2 was happening, but also that voice actors Bill Hader and Mindy Kaling will not be returning because Disney for some reason lowballed them on their offer to return making both of them refuse it as they felt it wasn't worth their time that really sucks I can't believe Disney right now is lowballing people so it's not really clear whether those voices will be recast or those will be two emotions we just don't see anymore because the details we got about this movie at D23 let us know that this will be following Riley as a teenager and they will be introducing new emotions I repeat Riley will be a teenager introducing new emotions. I'm not going to say it. You s Who's voice and horny? Jokes aside, though, I'm pretty sure Pixar is going to go there, and I cannot wait to see the reaction from very strict parents upset with whatever they do with this movie. Like we saw what Turning Red did. They weren't afraid to mention periods, tampons, and whatnot. They also had her twerking, drawing some fan fiction, and obviously becoming flustered for that young age. That was that movie. This movie is all about those kind of emotions. I'm not ready to see what they do. Obviously, they won't name it horny, but let me know who you think should voice horny. Then the last two reveals were Disney animated studio movies, one for Strange World. This is the movie starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Dennis Quaid, and Lucy Liu. It follows a group of adventurers who travel to a strange world. We just got some other looks at what this strange world is looking like, and that could be really good. Disney animation has been doing a pretty good job. I really liked Encanto. And then they revealed another original movie that they're working on titled Wish. We got some concept art and first looks of the main character Asha, and the movie is being described as Disney 
Disney's wish follows Asha, who sees a darkness in the kingdom of wishes and decides to wish on a star, then the star comes to life. This movie will also be featuring a character who's Valentino the goat, okay? With some concept art with what that'll look like. Again, that could be really good. We'll have to wait and see. Either way, those were the reveals for the first day of D23. Like I said, some exciting stuff, but overall I was kind of underwhelmed. Hopefully tomorrow with the panels of Marvel and Star Wars, Lucasfilm in there with some Indiana Jones, we could get a lot of exciting stuff to get us buzzing. Be sure you stay tuned on the channel for that coverage, but also let me know what you thought of all the reveals today. Don't be forgetting to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris, take care.